Hello everybody and welcome to another amazing video of DIY investing. I have two really important charts that I want to share with you guys that are going to be talking about the long term trend of Bitcoin as well as the entirety of crypto. This is something that is super important because if you guys understand what I'm going to be breaking down today, it's going to help everybody understand a lot more as far as how to go into this next market cycle, what to expect over the next year or two, as well as how to go into taking profits when the cycle top comes in. This is a very important time to be doing all of this because as we're about to be leaving accumulation most of the good entries are going to get left behind so if you're not preparing now many people are just simply going to miss out entirely so for today's video i'm going to break it down explain exactly what i'm thinking so that you guys can make the most money possible long term thank you guys so much for tuning in and with that being said let's jump right into this amazing video today Alrighty guys, here we are to start off today's video and we are going to be mapping out the long term trend of Bitcoin and then we're going to be jumping into the total market cap so that we can factor in how the altcoins are going to be coming into this as well. This is an important update because in yesterday's video we covered a little bit about how in each one of our cycles, whenever we begin a new trend, we always see us build some sort of main supporting trend line. And this is what we end up seeing inside of our first cycle. We have some sort of ascending trend line where the price consolidates above higher highs and higher lows. And then what always ends up leading us into a new all time high breakout, a new parabolic cycle. And this is something that we've seen every single one of our bull runs going back to our first trend line, going back to our next one here that started playing out in 2016 and 2017, many, many different reactions on this main trend line all the way up pretty much two years inside of this cycle and then that also led us into that final euphoric blow off top now going into the cycle in 2018 and 2020 we saw the same sort of thing many different reactions on that main trend line the only thing that separated this one was the fact that we had the covid uh, black swan where the price actually dropped all the way back down to three point eight thousand dollars so when we're looking at this the only one to have ever broken this trend was our last cycle but it's kind of understandable why that happened there was all kinds of negative news all kinds of global you know hysteria that was going on and so so those are simply some of those rare times where things like that end up playing out but i think long term when we're looking at this we understand that anything can happen but bitcoin does follow a specific pattern every bull run and every beginning to the new bull run we start some type of ascending support line and then that's where we end up riding until we go into the new all-time high breakout so when we're looking over here at this current cycle we're basically seeing the exact same thing as we've began the cycle from the bottom of FTX we've seen many different reactions on this main trend line and we're just once again maintaining some type of ascending support as we're building the next foundation into some sort of new all-time high move and i do believe that this is going to continue to play out in the same sort of ways because nothing has really changed when it comes to bitcoin the only difference is maybe it's a little less volatile but it's hard to even say that because we've had a nice consistent run off of the capitulation lows back at the end of the year of 2022 and so nothing is really out of order nothing has really changed nothing is really all that different it's just bitcoin following its same sort of price action now I want to talk to you guys a little bit about how the Bitcoin halvings factor into all of this, how all of this inside of the Bitcoin cycles, many people have a debate whether they believe that the Bitcoin cycles are driven because of the Bitcoin halving, and then other people debate that it doesn't really have anything to do with the price action of Bitcoin. It's just something that's already there. And I've heard either story, but I'm going to let you guys decide what you think. Now, when we're talking about the Bitcoin halvings, each one of these green dotted lines are the Bitcoin halving. And in each one of these cycles, we've actually had three and we'll be getting our fourth one coming up next year. Now, every single time we have the beginning of our new uptrend where we're maintaining that ascending foundation of support, what we end up seeing is the Bitcoin having come in here. The first one was November 28th of 2012, which is right here. I'm on a weekly time frame, so I couldn't get the exact date. But November 28th is the exact date. And what we saw right after that first Bitcoin having was the price of Bitcoin skyrocketing and breaking out into new all-time highs. And that's indicated here. We'll make it red for resistance. 
we can see that right after that Bitcoin halving, we saw the price immediately go into new all-time highs and make a parabolic blow off top. Now, inside of the next cycle, we actually see this happening at July the 9th, 2016. We had just finished the bear market bottom. We had just started up trending in this new ascending support. But what we end up seeing is kind of the same thing. It just took a little bit more time than what we saw in 2012. Price kind of rides off of this final support, climbs up all the way back up to those all-time highs, and then that's when we saw the all-time high breakout. So even though it's a little bit different, it's all relatively the same sort of thing. What we end up seeing is the beginning stages of the uptrend being built, the halving comes in, and then that's when we actually end up seeing the price really starting to break out. And so when we're looking at over here, inside of our last cycle, we end up seeing this happening on May 11th, 2020. And that was shortly after we made our first high, we had the COVID capitulation, and we had just regained our main trend line again. And that happened right here. And then once again, in the same sort of fashion, we rode that trend line for a little bit and then had our breakout into new all-time highs. And so we've seen that happen in this cycle. We've seen that happen in this cycle. And now we're gonna be projecting to get our next Bitcoin halving taking place April of 2024. So that's this next green dotted line. So far, everything is maintaining relatively the same sort of trend. We have an ascending support channel, just like we did in all of our prior cycles. We have already broken from all descending resistance at this point, like all of our other ones have. Um, and now as it's looking, as we have, you know, let's get an exact date time over here so we can see. 168 days until our next projected halving. You know, it's gonna be off a little bit. We don't know exactly when uh, until it just kind of happens. And so when we're looking at Bitcoin, we have a projection happening of April of 2024, but it could happen in May, could happen in June, could happen a little bit shorter period of time. You know, it's, it's hard to say, but chances are to be pretty close to that number. So if we're looking at around 160, 170 days approximately, that's not very long until we get that next halving. And when we're looking at prior cycles, every single time we have had one of these halvings, the price of Bitcoin has gone up dramatically. Same with 2016, even same with our last cycle. The only difference is we didn't have quite as parabolic of a cycle. I think mainly, I think mainly because of the fact we had COVID and all of that stuff going on. Now that we don't have that, it's going to be interesting to see how this next cycle lines up. I believe it's going to be a lot more parabolic in comparison to like how 2017 was. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that, you know, we don't have all of this negative stuff uh, keeping Bitcoin down. And I think that there's more going for Bitcoin than ever before heading into this next bull run. So what I think could potentially happen, maybe we make this quick run up to 48 and a half thousand, come back down and kind of trend back on that same support zone before our halving. I don't know 100%, but I expect that we're going to see at least some type of correction whenever we come and tag 48 and a half thousand. And so that's kind of what I'm watching for there. Whether we come back down and retest the trend line, that's kind of what I'm thinking we will end up doing before you know, we ultimately make a new all time high, but it's looking like we could actually end up doing that, you know, maybe at closer towards the summer to at the end of the year, somewhere inside of that six month range going into 2024. I think 2024 is going to be a lot more of an important year. You know, things might be a little bit slow. There might not be a lot going on, but I think a lot of that will, you know, be us building the final foundation of support before us going into that all time high breakout. So it's always played out like that. It's always taken a decent period of time, you know, before we've ever broken out and gone into a new all time high. This one took over 1200 days before we finally made one. This one was shorter than that, 1100 days. And so we're currently, if we were to come all the way over here, you know, 1100 days for us would be all the way at the end of the year, 2024. Um, and if we end up extending even further than that, it's hard to say, it all depends on how the correction goes, but I'm just telling, I'm just helping you guys to be able to visualize and be able to see what it's actually going to take before we get there. Nobody knows what the price action is going to look like 100%. We all might have targets. We all might have an idea of where we think it's going to go to. But at the end of the day, we don't 100% know until the price of Bitcoin just does what it's going to do. Um, when we're looking at this, so far it's all the same. And that's what gives me a lot of confidence that we're going to be able to make a good amount of profit moving forward from here. And it's most likely not going to vary too much in comparison with our prior four-year cycles. I wanted you guys to understand how the halvings factor in here 
because whenever our halving takes place, we've seen the price of Bitcoin go up significantly. Whether you think that the entire bull run is driven because of the Bitcoin halving, I don't think so. To me, it's almost just like a social thing where people that really are smart about crypto, they buy all the way back way before the halving, right? They're buying in the early part of the cycle, which is way before. The halving comes in here, and then this is where all of the public buys, because that's when the price of Bitcoin ends up going into new all-time highs, right? So what we end up seeing is the early, early buyers are getting in way before the halving takes place. They're getting in on this early part of the cycle. And then once the halving comes in, that's really where all the media attention shifts. And so I don't really think that the Bitcoin halving is so much the price driver. I just think that it's mainly the social aspect of things, the, the emotional psychology of things, where once people start hearing about it, once people start talking about it, that's literally what always sets in motion all of the media attention and public awareness to get the blow off top. So I don't think that it really is that important, although we do see an obvious trend. I think it's an important trend to watch. I think it's an important thing to analyze, and I really don't care what anybody's real opinion about the having is for the most part, considering the fact I just watch the charts, I watch the cycles, and we actually have a much better way of getting into the markets by understanding the four-year cycles as well. So I wanted to help you guys to understand this a little bit. Now let's actually jump into the total market cap so that I can break down what I'm seeing over here. In my last video, we were talking about whether or not this was gonna end up truly breaking out and making a new high. And we have now confirmed that in my opinion, making this nice move outside of resistance. Now this sets in motion the next high. Now one of the things I wanna to talk to you guys about here going into this next move had everything to do with the last time we talked about this chart. Now what we talked about was our Elliott Wave count. And when we talked about this, we were analyzing the fact that we had just finished our first five wave impulse, right? One, two, three, four, five. And then we had just barely finished our ABC correction as well. And so now that we're breaking out, this sets in a much bigger Elliott wave impulse to come. And what we were kind of mainly talk about when it comes to that is this chart over here. This is our Elliott wave cycle chart. This is how Elliott wave cycle uh, theory is actually broken down and visualized inside of a graph. And so where we're at inside of this market is this one wave, right? We just finished our first Elliott wave impulse right here. So where we're at is right here. One, two, three, four, five, A, B, C. That's this entire first move right here. And so now what's coming is this big picture wave one, two, three, four, five. We're gonna have another three wave impulse to the upside coming. And so now that we've broken out, this is confirmed this next move right over here. And so I do believe that that's where we're at in the grand scheme of things. If we overlay this, so this is pretty much what we're talking about here. This is the correction. This is the beginning of that impulse. We had finished all of these corrective waves and now we're starting this big picture wave three right here. And so I think that's what's most important that we analyze is the fact that this wave three, notice how it's much bigger in comparison to the wave one. The reason why is because inside of a wave three, wave one is what starts the hype, right? Smart money buys inside of this first impulse. They start the beginning of this new uptrend right here. And then, uh, then that's when the media attention comes in. That's when the public awareness comes in. And that's why we see this much bigger wave three impulse is because this is going to be the most volume sort of impulse. This is where all of the public starts jumping in. This is where the majority of the hype is as far as ROI and as far as price discovery. All of those sort of things will generally happen inside of a wave three impulse. And then wave five, even though wave five can be really big, even though wave five can be just as big as the wave three was, generally speaking, uh, it's going to be, you know, its own sort of thing. Sometimes it's big, sometimes it's small. We don't ever 100% know what's gonna happen with a wave five impulse. But where we're at right now is inside of this beginning stage of this wave three right here. And so that's why I've always drawn that uh, I believe that we're gonna end up running all the way up to this lower high here is because inside of this wave three, that would actually give us a perfect sort of Elliott wave impulse. Because when we're looking at this, we have to go to at least the 1618. For this to be a confirmed wave three, we have to go to at least right here. So the best target that you could probably draw, the lowest target, um, would be right here about 1.83 trillion. And that's why I say that 40K is the first target for Bitcoin. You know, if we go to 48 and a half thousand, that's a great sort of thing. 
we'd go all the way up here, make an even higher blow off top. But for me, I think the majority of profit taking should probably be done at this level. Uh, just because of the fact that's our minimum wave target. Even if Bitcoin goes up a little bit higher, even if the market goes up a little bit higher, you're not going to be missing out on all that much profit by taking profits a little bit down in here. You don't want to try and wait and hold out all the way to the last second, trying to squeeze out every single little bit that you possibly can, because all that is is greed. You got to be thankful with what you get. You got to be grateful and be able to take profits. And you got to have the emotional intelligence to be able to just kind of let go of that money and be thankful that you got away with a profit of any kind. Even if you see the market go higher, you know, it's a really deceptive thing to be able to think that you're going to be able to just jump back into it. And a lot of people will do that. They'll take their profits. They'll see it go higher. They'll be like, well, I was wrong. I guess I need to get it in. And then the market drops again. So we just have to be aware of these things, not make the same mistakes twice. And as I'm seeing this, you know, we just started this next breakout. I think we have quite a ways to go before we're ever talking about profit taking. So if you're holding positions, I think the best thing that we can do is continue to hold those for this next coming high because I think that this is going to be a very big one. Anyways, guys, if you found value in this, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these videos. If you guys want to join the Discord server, if you guys want to see how I'm investing inside of the market, what I'm buying, what I'm selling, anything that I'm going to be investing in, whether it's stocks, commodities, or crypto, long term, you guys are going to have a lifetime access, one-time payment. So if you guys get in, you're always going to have access to anything that I'm doing inside of the market with my money. So if you guys want to check that out, links in the description to go ahead and sign up on my website. Thank you all so much for the support. I'm looking forward to this next hike because I've got a lot of confidence we're all about to make a lot of money in the process. So thank you all so much for tuning in. With that being said, I will catch you in the next one. As always, peace out.